Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Alladhi anzal ala abdihi alkitab Walam yaj'al lahu iwaja qayyima Qayyiman liyundhira ba'san shadidan min ladun Wa yubashir al-mu'minin alladhina ya'amalun al-salihat Anna lahum ajran hasana makithina fihi abada Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammad al-rasulullah la nabiya ba'dah Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahabatih Wa kulli man tabi'a hudahu wa stamsaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin wa ba'd Fa subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqlata min lisani yafqahu qawli Brothers and sisters and those who are watching possibly at home Tonight, we begin by saying Alhamdulillah, thanking and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us to be here, gather in this blessed place. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us and be pleased with this halaqah, inshaAllah. Tonight is the second session of our discussion about Surat Al-Baqarah. And I would like still to continue on the introduction of Surah Al-Baqarah. There is no doubt that we know that Surah Al-Baqarah is the longest surah in the Holy Quran. It is 286 verses. But in Surah Al-Baqarah, there are ayat which are very special. I would like to mention just two of those. One, Ayatul Kursi, there's no doubt. It is considered the heart of the Holy Quran, but they talk about the oneness of Allah, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's considered really the essence of our aqidah, our iman. But there are other two ayats that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly according to the narration, when he was on the Mi'raj. And that is the last two ayats of Al-Baqarah. Aman al-Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun kullun amana ila akhiri. And that is one of the reasons that I personally, I really love that two ayats, or three ayats actually, the last surat al-Baqarah. Nillahi ma fi samawati. And normally in some of the salat, I begin with Ayatul Kursi and then these two ayat because these are the most important verses of the Holy Quran and all of these are in Surah Al-Baqarah but also don't forget that actually according to the narration the last Quran that came down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu also in the Surah Al-Baqarah it's not in Surah Al-Ma'idah as many people uh, mistakenly understood it is the ayah, وَاتَّقُوا وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُخْشَرُونَ فِيهِمْ الْأَبْصَارِ And this ayah actually was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to indicate that it is the time for him very near to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now we mentioned that last session also that Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed more than 10, almost 20, 10 years, because from the very beginning of Hijrah until the last ayah that I mentioned earlier, it is all throughout of the 10 years of, after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the whole ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah is Madaniyah. It means after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what is also most important point I would like to underline before we go to the ayat, before the tafsir itself, is that Surah Al-Baqarah is considered the summary of the whole teachings of the Holy Quran. In other words, 
that every single aspect of the teaching of Islam is found in Surah Al-Baqarah. Every single thing. In general, we talk about Aqidah, Tawheed, we talk about Ibadat, we talk about Mu'amalat. And every single of those are in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins, for example, by the divisions of mankind that Allah divides into men into three categories. Number one is the mu'minun, the believers, those who muttaqun, talikal kitabu la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin. These are the first categories of the people, first group of the people. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk the second one, that is the kuffar, inna alladhina kafaru. Number six, ayah number six. And then two ayat later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk in a very lengthy way, very long way, about the munafiqun, the hypocrites. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about every single aspect of belief in al-Islam. As you know that Allah, we have five or six pillars of Islam, iman. Number one is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their ayat. Ayatul Kursi, for example, talk about the oneness of Allah. Wa ilahukum ilahun wahid. Then it talk about the angels. Man kana aduwa li Jibril. It's an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. It talk about the book. Alladhina yu'minuna ima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik. It talk about the prophets, the stories of prophets in Surah Al-Baqarah. Many, many of those. But most importantly, the first prophet. Our father Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa idh qala rabbuka lil malaikati. Inni ja'ilun fir aldi khalifa. And it's talk about Adam. Alayhi salatu wa salam and his wife. But also it talks about uh, the qiyamat. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ Also in Surah Al-Baqarah. In other words, that every single of our belief is there in Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah also talks about every aspect of ibadat. Let's say the five pillars of Islam. Shahada certainly we mentioned that earlier about aqidah. But then you have salat. It's mentioned the first very beginning of the ayah. And so on and so on. Then Surah Al-Baqarah talk about zakat. Talking about fasting, 183. And then it talk about hajj. So it talk all ibadat. That is in Surah Al-Baqarah. But beyond just aqidah and mu'amal ibadat, also, Surah Al-Baqarah is talking about all types of mu'amalat in al-Islam. From business. Allah has made business halal and Allah make the riba haram. Business is halal and riba is haram. It's mentioned Surah Al-Baqarah. It talks about uh, the, the pork. It talks about maisir, gambling. It talks about khamar. It's all mu'amalat there. Halal, haram. It's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, it talks about family life. It talks about what type of spouse that you are looking in life. And then how the process should happen in the process of marriage. Until how that marriage should happen. Until if any wrong thing happen, and you must divorce, let's say, how to divorce according to the Sharia is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Until when someone dies, what happened after that? There is what we call mirath. It's called inheritance. It's also mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. The details in Surah Al-Nisa. But it's already mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah actually. It talks about wasiyat. What does it mean wasiyat? Legacy. If you want, if someone wants, let's say, actually before even you know that you're going to die, and you want to leave something behind very important, that is called wasiyat. And the best is to write, to write. And it is very important actually right now, because in America, the law is different from the Islamic law. But if you make wasiyat, that can bind. When you die, and there is a dispute happen between the family members, that wasiyat can be a reference here in America. And that wasiyat actually is an Islamic thing. There's Sharia. And it is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah as well. And yeah, that's actually wasiyat, will. Yeah, that's will. Yeah, will. That's wasiyat. And there is a specific way of doing that. Sometimes you need to go to the lawyer to do it. The isna, for example, there is a special application how to make will. In the language of Islam, it's called wasiyah. In the language of America, it's called will. Will. Let's say you have a house and you have two sons or two daughters or whatever. You have several children. And you are worried that your children are going to dispute, to fight about that one house. 
You want that house to be solved. How? Write down. That is in the wheels. That is divided, you know, evenly. Or you want to give to your daughter more because according to inheritance you give your son get more. That's fine. This call was here as well. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Until it talks about financial transactions. That when you learn from someone, write it down. The importance of even such when you are alone, when you are borrowing money and so on and so forth, then write it down because that is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, brothers and sisters, the point here, from the Surah Al-Baqarah actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to tell us that Al-Quran is not only talking about rituals. It's not only about ibadah. Islam is talking about life as a whole, from A to Z, from A to Z. Nothing is left, but except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it in the Holy Quran. And from the very beginning of that surah, up to Al-Fatiha in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down almost every single aspect of human's life. From Tawheed, to Ibadat in the Masajid, in the Ramadan, in Makkah, when you Hajj, until in the market, it's, it's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. But... The conclusion of the theme of Surah Al-Baqarah, because every surah actually has certain theme, certain main topic. The conclusion of all those of Surah Al-Baqarah is about al-ita'ah, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why from the very beginning it talked about those who obey Allah and those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you call muttaqun. Those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are kuffar or munafiqun. It is about ita'ah actually. And then Allah continued by saying, Ya ayyuhan nasu abudu rabbakum ladhi khalakakum. It is our obedience. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, what is the main point of Adam's story? It is about obeying the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says to Adam, do not eat that forbidden tree. But Iblis came to him. And then he disobeyed Allah. It's about obedience. Okay. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about Bani Israel, why, why Bani Israel is mentioned? Ya Bani, is, ya, ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum. It's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Why? It is about obedience. That most of those Muh 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 Musa followers, they call themselves Bani Israel. It means children of Israel. Israel means Yaqub. Did not obey Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So again, it is about obedience. My point is that if you read the Surah Al-Baqarah, 286 ayah the conclusion of all those is about obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the main theme of surah al-baqarah now let's go directly to tafsir five ayat inshallah briefly Yeah, we mentioned last session that uh, yeah yeah that you're gonna get a barakah and if you don't you are going to have a hasra Hasra mean a kind of misery if you don't read Surah Al-Baqarah. We mentioned some hadith last, because this is the second session actually. But if you go to the YouTube, that you is fine, inshallah. Now, let's go directly to um, Surah Al-Baqarah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alif la mim. Thalika al-kitabu la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah with what we call in the language in the, in the language of tafsir ahruf al muqatta'a ahruf or huruf muqatta'a it means in some ayat and it is 29 places in the whole quran 29 places in the whole quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begin those 29 of surahs in the holy quran with certain huruf certain letters some of those are one letters some of those are two letters some of those three some of those four and the longest are five for example, one letter is Qaf, Noon, Wal Qalam Yom Asturun. It's one letter only. It's two letters, Hamim, Yasin, Yasin, two letters. And there is also Taha, Wal Quranil, Ma'anzana Alayka Al Quran Li Tashka. And then there are three ayat, uh, three letters, Alif, La, Mim, Ta, Ta, Sin, Mim. And there are four, Alif, La, Mim, Sad. And there are five. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Swap, Surat Maryam. And the other one, Ha, Mim, Ain, Sin, Kaf. 
These are ahruf or letters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start his, his Quran in some surahs. 29 of those. Now the question is, what does it mean? There are different opinions of the scholars, but certainly the, the most, the best interpretation of this, those who say, Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi. Allah knows better its intention. Because every single huruf in the Quran, not only word, huruf in the Holy Quran, has meanings. But not all of us understand it. Not all of us know it. And when in time that we don't know, for example, Alif Lam, what is the meaning? We say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the meaning. It doesn't mean it doesn't have meaning. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never reveal to Prophet Muhammad without any intention, without any meaning. Must be with meaning, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the meaning. That is the best interpretation among many, many interpretations of the ulama. Some other uh, ulama try to give different opinions, a different interpretation according to their own understanding. I don't, we don't have the right to say no, but, but, but we say, for, you know, we respect, but we may disagree because according uh, to uh, many, many mufassirun, that the best interpretation is Allahu a'lam bi muradihi. Allah knows better its intention. Okay. Some ulama mufassirun, for example, say Alif Lamin. They say Alif means Allah, Lam here Jibril, and Muhammad, uh, Mim is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from Allah through Jibril to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But again, there is no Dalil as, an, as a basis of their opinions. And unless there is a basis from the Quran or Sunnah or opinions of the Sahaba, we cannot say that this is a, an authentic opinion. That is an opinion that we respect, but it doesn't mean we make this as a reference. The only reference is what is according to the Sahaba, and the Sahaba mostly say, Allahu alam bi muradi. Now, but there are some uh, uh, explanation, the purpose of those ahruf, of those huruf. Either it is known, qaf, alif, lam, mim, what are the purposes? There are two given, two given by the scholars. Number one, it is called lit ta'aziz. Now, what does it mean, lit ta'aziz? from the word mu'jiza. As you know that the Quran is mu'jiz, right? Kalamullahi al-mu'jiz. The definition of the Holy Quran is Kalamullahi al-mu'jiz al-munazzal ala Muhammad al-muta'abbal bitilawati. That is the definition of the Quran in Arabic language. It means the words of Allah that mu'jiza. Mu'jiz means the mu'jiza. Defeat any challenge. So the ta'ziz means to defeat any challenge. And what does it mean? When the Holy Quran was revealed down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the only, the only things that the Arab proud of at that time, the only, that is language, Arabic language. They are so high in terms of Arabic language. They are so skillful in terms of they are, they are making good shi'r, poetry. There is a special place in Makkah called, uh, I forgot the name, uh, but there is a kind of nadi club. In that club, all the best shair or poetry is hanged. And anyone who wrote the best poetry is considered one of the most noble among the Arab. So they are so proud of their Arabic language. Now all of a sudden the Quran, suddenly all the Quran came down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed this to them, they said, what is this? What is this? They are trying even to challenge. But what the Quran says, the Quran came down and it says, "Wala jita ma'atil insu wal jinnu ala an yamfa an ayatuka bi mithli hada al Quran, la yatuna bi mithlihi walau kana baghdhum bi baghdin zahira." If the whole mankind and jinns come together to make something similar to the Holy Quran, they will never be able to make something similar to the Holy Quran, even they are helping each other. It is whole Holy Quran, because they are not able to make one Holy Quran. Another ayah came down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, surah pak, only 10 surahs. Anybody can make the 10 surahs similar to the Holy Quran, they fail to make it. And then finally, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed down even just one ayah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّمِّثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ 
call all the witnesses, I mean helpers. Call those who are econom, call those who are politicians, call those who are scientists, and make just one ayah similar to none so far had ever made, even just why like the Holy Quran. So when the Holy Quran came down with this huruf, Allah wanted to say, look at the same huruf that you're talking about. Alif, you are talking about Alif too. Lam, you have Alam too. But why you are not able to make something like similar to the Holy Quran? That is because the Holy Quran is not a man's words, not a human's words like yours. That is enough, it is sufficient actually for them to believe that this is something different. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed down I, uh, huruf, letters, to say to them, look at that, you have those letters. Are you able to, to compose those letters to make something similar? No, none of those can make it. This is what we call the ta'ziz. So Allah revealed down to challenge them back because they wanted to challenge the Holy Quran. The second purpose of this ahruf is, is called the tambih. It means to get attention, to get attention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before talking about the whole surah of Surah Al-Baqarah say for Alif Lam Mim, hey, hey, listen, listen, listen. Pay attention. Allah wanted to say pay attention to that. That is the, the second purpose according to, to some uh, scholars. Now then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Now brothers, in the language of the Arabic language, ذَلِكَ means that. This in Arabic is هَذَا. If you open any translation of the Holy Quran today, you will find that the translation of ذَلِكَ, any translation, even you open right now in your phone, it means this. This, not that. Now, but why Allah uses the word dhalika, which is actually means that? There are several meanings here. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to say to, ele to elevate the Holy Quran up. And he would say, it's not actually down to you, but it's up there in the heaven. Secondly, Allah wanted to say that the essence of the Holy Quran is not the, let the papers that you have in hands. And that's why we say to those who are burning the Holy Quran, you can burn papers, but you will never be able to burn the Holy Quran. Why? Because the real Holy Quran, the essence of the Holy Quran is up there in the Lahul Mahfuz and in our heart and in our mind too. So no one is able to burn the Holy Quran. You can only burn papers, but not the Holy Quran. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Dhalika. Because it's away, in terms of books, in terms of papers, in terms of physical, it's away from you. But actually in terms of teachings and guidance, it is in your heart. It is in your heart. This is the meaning of dhalika. Why this dhalika? Not hadal kitab, but dhalika. Which is meaning, this is the book. And then also Allah says, la rayba fihi. No, there is no doubt in it. There are at least two meanings here. Number one, that the Holy Quran has no doubt that it is coming from Allah, not from anywhere else. Why? Because if you find that the Holy Quran came from someone else, you will find a lot of contradictions in it. And we can learn lessons from the Bible today. Why the Bible has a lot of contradictions? In one Bible, you will find many contradictions. I'm not talking about one version to another version of the Bible. In one single Bible, when you read it from the beginning to the end, you will find different contradictions. How about if you open Kim's Jane version, New Kim's Jer uh, James version, and then this one, and then this version? Many of those ayat have been taken off, and then nobody buy it. They put it again and again in order for the people to buy the books. <laughs> That's what Ahmadida says. Right? So the Holy Quran has no doubt it's coming only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because there is none contradiction in it and you can imagine these books you know someone's written a book this big and there is no contradiction from the very beginning there is tansikh there is a kind of synchro so synchronized 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 you know how, how you call it in, in a simple language it, it's not cannot be divided to different places it kind of is connected to each other when you talk about Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in Surah Al-Baqarah, you find his story again in Surah Taha. And then read it. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Musa in Surah Al-Baqarah? And Allah again is talking in Surah Taha. What is the difference between here and there? Why repetition? You will find it. You will find it. 
That is la raiba fihi. That it's only can happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who make it. Not even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the second meaning of la raiba fihi. The second meaning of la raiba fihi, that there is no doubt that it is perfect. Quran itself perfect. Allah has perfected His word with truth and justice. So there is no doubt when we read the Holy Quran from the very beginning until the end, you will not find any crookedness. As Donald Trump used to say, crook. Crook Hillary. <laughs> there is no crookedness in the Holy Quran. It's perfect 100%. That is the meaning of La Raiba Fi. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hudan lil muttaqin. We talk about hidayah when we talk about ihdina surat al mustaqim. So I don't, I don't have to, to repeat that once again. I just wanted to say that in general, there are two types of hidayah. There is what we call hidayat irshad. And the Holy Quran is functioning as hidayatul irshad. That is telling, teaching the people what to do and how to do. But the hidayat tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are people who understand the Holy Quran who read the Holy Quran, who wrote many books about the Holy Quran, but they don't believe in the Holy Quran. Why? Because the Holy Quran is irshad. It teaches you, tells you, but it doesn't guide you as tawfiq in your heart. You know, if you read the books of uh, Professor, I forgot his name, he's um, George Washington University, who wrote about Sharia, wrote about Muhammad Wasallam, Esposito, subhanAllah, you know, sometimes when you read his books, you feel that he knows better than, than us, or many of us. His understanding is so deep. But why he's still Catholic? Because his hidayah is only a shot. Only a shot. Not tawfiq. The tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, hudan lil muttaqin. Lil muttaqin means those who are pious, those who follow the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, the hidayah to tawfiq can only happen when we are trying to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa and hidayah is interconnected. It is impossible for any person to claim to be guided by Allah without struggling to have taqwa Allah azza wa jal. And inshallah by having taqwa Allah azza wa jal, that is the embodiment, that is the proof of having the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, finally, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that mentioned the characteristics of the muttaqun, I just wanted to mention briefly, number one is Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib, those who believe in the unseen. There's a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that he asked his sahaba, who are the best believer? Who are the most noble believer? And some sahaba say the angels. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, how it is possible the angel and the angel is with Allah already? Some others said, the prophets, the Rusul, the Anbiya, the prophet said, how is it possible the prophets the, they consider the most, the most noble mu'min, iman, and they already given, given revelation. Allah has already revealed to them. So it is logic if they are strong in their faith. So who are the most faithful one in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Those who do not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who do not re receive the revelation, but they are still strong in their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is among the guide, the, the guide here. We don't see Allah, right? We don't receive the, re the guide, uh, revelation from Allah. But through Prophet Muhammad, but alhamdulillah, we do believe as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we try it as the Prophet Muhammad believed. And we are, we that considered among those who are respectful in faith, in believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, those who are spending some, not all, some of them have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Risk. Risk, my brother, is not only money. Much is, money is a small portion of risk. Every blessing, everything that Allah is giving us is a risk. Health is a risk. We use our health for what? For ibadah and helping others. Knowledge is a risk. We use our knowledge to help others. That is mimarazaknahum too. There are many ways of expanding the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then those who believe in the revelation of Allah. Torah, Zabur and others to the other prophet before. And those who are certain, yakin, yakin. 
Now the question is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to al-akhirah, he specifically mentioned the word yaqeen. Because it is not easy to believe in the akhirah. Most of the people in the 21st century, despite of the knowledge that they have, despite of the smartness, they are so smart, but they tend not to believe in akhirah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned yaqeen. Why? Because yaqeen is the essence of faith. Yaqeen is the essence of faith. It's not easy because we are all being attached to these physical things. To physical things. The first time that we are going to disattach from these physical things, material things, when Sakratul Maut happened, then we see in front of us. We're going to see the Sirat, we're going to see, you know, not it happened, but we start seeing it. We're going to see the Nar down there, we're going to see the Jannah on the other side. And then we see back, our money is still in the bank. MashaAllah, our wife or the wife, your husband is still there, your children are still there, you still have fancy home. At that moment, it's so difficult moment. Because you are going to be regretful. Why I don't spend my money in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why I don't spend some time to educate my children? I see my children are doing bad things. Now I want to do things no more. I, I'm, so, I'm seeing my way to go there. In the meantime, I'm not prepared yet to go there. I'm not prepared yet. So those who have yaqeen is truly what Allah says after this. Ula'ika ala hudam min rabbihim. The real success when you have that yaqeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. I'm going to continue talking more, more details inshallah in our coming session. But once again, you know, um, Surah Al-Baqarah is very rich. We're going to talk about the story of Baqarah. We're going to talk about the story of Bani Israel. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about what does it mean to be Khalifa. What is the meaning of um, angels asked to prostrate to Adam? Is it... Um, what happened with Iblis? Why he is thrown away from the, from the blessings of Allah? And he was not an angel. He was a, among the jinn. Kana mila jinni. But what's the reason that he's included in the angels? We are going to discuss all this, inshallah, when we come to those ayat. So it is enough for tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of us. Aqulu qali hadha wa astaghfirullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.